Do not adjust your sets, folks, because what's on stage has entered the wonderful and classy world of black and white in celebration of the upcoming world premiere stage adaptation of the Oscar-winning monochrome movie, The Artist. And I'm about to head into rehearsals to speak to some of the show's principal cast members, as well as the man at the helm of the production, Drew McConey. It's been a really amazing experience working alongside Lindsay Ferentino on the adaptation of this because the piece that we're working on, the story that we want to tell, it lives in this magical space between words and visual storytelling. And so to be given the opportunity to have such a close um, and supportive relationship with a writer and they're sort of funneling both of our areas of interest and experience into uh, a story like this feels unique um, and to be honest with you we've had so much fun I mean the majority of our working relationship has been um, Lindsay sitting you know with a, a laptop furiously writing down and me fully dancing a a around her in public spaces which has always caused probably much embarrassment to her. This story is about the decline of a very very successful um, silent movie star who refuses to or, or doesn't have the confidence to use his own voice. He thinks that the, the introduction of sound into movies is just a, a fad, an overnight thing. I suppose really um, in the same way as a mime artist might do that. If somebody says, you know, your mime would be so much better if you, um, if you spoke. <laughs> but also it's about the rise of, of a, a, a very enthusiastic uh, young actress singer, Soubrette, I think they used to call her back in the old days, um, uh, who's very gregarious and lively and, and she, um, it's about her, her rise to, to really take his place at the top of the tree as far as Hollywood movies are concerned. So the story that we're telling is an absolute love letter to the film um, and it follows the story really closely but some of the kind of artistic license that needs to be taken in a story like this has been fully supported and I think the audiences that love the film will come out feeling that they've really had a rich experience of that film on stage but I think for those people um, who might not have seen the film this story is told in a, in a, a, a sort of a fresh theatrical way that, that plays with poetry and different ways the film did. So um, I play Peppy Miller in the show. She is the young ingenue type um, at first. Um, she is a budding actress and um, she's inspired by all these stars that have come before her such as George, Constance, um, who you will see in the production. Um, and she falls in love, let's say, um, with George. Let's say. Let's say. Ah. I play a producer stroke director of movies big Hollywood mogul, Al Zimmer. Uh, it was played in the movie by uh, John Goodman. So there's not much singing and dancing for me. A little bit of singing, a little bit of dancing, but I, I like to leave that to the people who can really do it. So um, yeah, it's a really interesting role, actually. It keeps popping in and out of the, of the pieces and scenes to, uh, to, to clarify, really. Yeah. <laughs> I played George Valentin, and uh, he is a star of the silent film era and he's at the top of his game, and he's worked really hard to get there. And all of a sudden, this new era comes along and he doesn't feel like he can really keep up. It's too much, it's too fast. I remember when I watched the film, uh, my singer, right, Jean Desjardins, it's the actor who is incredible. Um, he reminded me of Gene Kelly, the way his eyes just sparkled. Uh, I thought he was so brilliant. Um, and, you know, he, Gene Kelly's the reason why I wanted to be a dancer, so getting to have another essence of him without having to, um, do a role that he's done, but kind of pay tribute in, in our own way, feels really, really lovely. <laughs> There's many things that need to go into the consideration of turning a silent movie uh, into a theatrical event. And one of those is the, the visual container in which the story takes place. And so the iconic, warm, silvery, rich, romantic, black and white element of the silent movie era um, has been absolutely leapt into with full heart and spirit with this production. Everything's black and white. Um, 
we haven't been on stage yet, so we haven't seen the sets, but we've seen the mock-ups, and it's... Yeah. It looks absolutely beautiful. I think we'll be very surprised in how we achieve the kind of grayscale, as it were, um, through the use of lighting and design um, and the costume department and the wigs department and the makeup teams and the lighting designers are working incredibly hard to um, bring that kind of movie um, vision to life on stage. That grayscale uh, with the costumes but then our skin tone it's obvious that there's going to be a, we were having a discussion about it and the way that they're going to um, design the lighting is going to try and make it look like, I mean, doing a grayscale makeup would be like Elphaba <laughs> and that seems a little intense. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they're getting really creative with the lighting, which is um, exciting. The whole production takes place within the lens of an old fashioned movie camera um, and playing with the theatricality of that has been a really exciting part of the process and one of the greatest challenges um, and therefore one of the greatest adventures. When approaching the artist on stage, one of the questions that everybody asks almost instantly is, how are you going to do the dog? And so we have worked with this amazing uh, artist called Maya, um, who has created a dog, a theatrical dog for us. He doesn't like to be referred to as a puppet. Um, and he has become just as messy and naughty in the way that we've made the show. You know, you know, for me as a director and a choreographer, it's like you pour every fiber of your being into these big production numbers and this artistry. And then as soon as the dog walks on stage, you're like, oh, everyone's just gonna be staring at the dog. In the film of the artist, the dog is actually called Jack, um, and it's a Jack Russell. I think that's what the character is. But the dog that played Jack in the film was called Uggy. And so as a little sort of love letter to the fans of the film, they'll get the fact that we've actually changed the name of the dog to um, the dog that played the dog in the film, if that makes sense, because I think that dog was such a loved character in the making of the movie that we wanted to pay homage um, to that actual artist, that, that um, you know, sort of artistic dog that played that character. So we've changed the name in the stage play to Uggy, which is where the name came from. Hopes and aspirations for the show are are huge, like a dream should be. You know, it feels like we're onto something here. We're using all the different kinds of mediums to tell a story that may be set in the 1920s, late 1920s, but um, feels so incredibly relevant to today. I think that what is really exciting about the artist is that it really does blend and bring together a lot of different forms of theatre, a lot of different genres. And so the story charts the journey from the silent movie era through to the talkies. And that provides us a theatrical opportunity to be able to start the piece in a visual storytelling world, you know, akin to a, a ballet or a piece of sort of dance. And then move through this arrival of sound as we sort of start creating a play and then that blossoms into that wonderful collaboration of all the art forms in a, in a big music going to be game MGM musical and so I think what I'm excited about is people coming and actually experiencing the way that this story the form in which we're telling the story is completely dictated by the content and the emotional opportunity within that and so I really feel like that there's a big audience for this show because I think that if you like any aspect of theatricality there will be parts of that within the story that we're telling. A musical theatre, theatre in general, is a very precarious industry and no one can predict the future of a piece. You think you've got all the ingredients right and then something about it's not quite working, it's something only audiences know. Um, but when you get it right, when you, when you get it right, it's a, it's a great feeling when all the, all the planets are right, uh, aligned, you get the right choreographer at the top of his game, right director, right performers, good, you know, they, you, you, you improve your chances. Now, I've done a few shows in my time and um, uh, I've never been more hopeful of the, about the success of a show than I, than I, than I am with uh, the artist. Of course, my dream for any storyteller is that their story gets to be shared with as many people as possible and um, the dream would be for as many people as possible to see it. The world premiere of The Artist runs at Theatre Royal Plymouth from the 11th to the 25th of May 2024. And in the meantime, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up and ring the bell for notifications. Leave your comments about the show in the section below, but please keep it kind and I'll see you next time for What's On Stage. This is Gary Wilmot, News at 10, in the Jerwood space. Thank you so much. Yeah.
here. My dog started snoring at the end of that. <laughs> I don't think he got that. He was like, right. <laughs> Were you bored? Did we bore you? Well, I play somebody who's very handsome. Um. I just <laughs> <carry> again. <laughs>